Hello friends, thank you for watching this video. I am Muhammad and today what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be seeing how we can actually integrate Postgres within our .NET Web API. We're gonna be switching our Web API from SQLite to Postgres and we're gonna be going through step by step how we can actually set this up. So let's get started. What I have here is I have my normal web api that we usually use and within this web api if i open my program.cs as we can see here inside of my program.cs i'm actually utilizing sqlite as my database i'm relying on this connection string which allows me to connect locally to my sqlite database which currently exists here in order for me to do everything that i need to so what we're going to be doing right now is i'm going to be creating first my database creating a username which actually i can connect to it through it and then i'm going to be updating my application to take advantage of this so in order for me to do that i'm going to open my terminal what i want to do is make sure that my my Postgres installed and I'm going to utilize homebrew. So I'm going to brew install Postgres. It's already installed on my machine. So it's going to tell me it's already installed, which is perfect. So now that I have done this, let me clear this up. What I want to do right now is I want to connect to it. I'm going to use PSQL Postgres. And now basically, as you can see here, my terminal has changed in order for me to interact with Postgres. And once I have it here, what I want to do is first, I actually, I want to create a user in order for me to authenticate with it. So to do this, I'm going to put create role. I'm going to call it app user. For example, I'm gonna say with login password, and I'm gonna put the password one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And now we can see here my app user role has been created. Now what I wanna do is I wanna assign a role for this user. I wanna make it super admin in order for me to make it easier. But usually in a real scenario, you don't really wanna do this. You wanna specify specific roles, but in order for us to make it easier for this video, we're gonna assign a super admin user role. So let's see how we can do that. Put alter role app user with super user and once that has been done we can see that my app user now is a super user and now once i have this in place what i want to do is i want to create now my database so we put create database and i'm gonna call this my db my app db and now my app db has been created now what i want to do is i want to assign this user to be able to connect this my uh, to this database and to do this all i need to do is grant connect on database my app db to app user Perfect. So now I have done this. As you can see here, I have granted the connection. I got a grant. Perfect. So this is all I need to do in, on, inside my Postgres in order for me to utilize it. I created a database. I connected a, created a user. I created a password and I'm connecting them both together. So now what we need to do is we need to go back to my rider. And inside rider here, what I want to do is I'm going to open my terminal. So now what I want to do is I want to install some packages. I want to navigate to my Formula One data service. So the Formula One data service. Uh, let me clear this up and the first library that I want to install is basically the Postgres NuGet package so I'm gonna put .NET add package npg sql dot entity framework core dot Postgres sql so it's gonna be the first one and as we can see it's installed successfully the second one is gonna be which is already there it's gonna be .NET add package Microsoft dot entity framework core dot design okay perfect and the last one let's clear this up it's gonna be almost the same thing, but instead of design, it's gonna to be tools. Okay, great. So now that has been installed successfully, what I wanna do is I wanna open my CS Proj and just make sure they have installed. And as we can see here, I have them installed. The design is gonna be on version four and I have my entity framework tool also on version four, perfect. And I have my Postgres NuGet package. So once I have done this, the next step that I wanna do is I wanna open my data service class. And as you can see here, I have a migration folder. So what I want to do is I'm going to delete this migration folder because this migration folder currently belong to SQLite. So I'm going to delete it. And what I want to do right now is I'm going to open my terminal again. I'm going to clear this up and I'm going to be creating a new migration for this folder, for this application in order for me to actually make sure it is running through Postgres. But before I do that, I need to basically update my program.cs in order for me to take full advantage of my Postgres because here we can see it's still configured to use SQLite. So first of all, I need to update my connection string. So if I go to my app settings, I want to basically add my connection string. And what I'm going to put here is I'm going to create a new connection string and I'm going to call it sample db connection. And I'm going to add my connection string here, which is going to be user space ID equal. And if we take a look at my terminal, we can see I call it app user. So I'm going to put app user app user then i need to specify the password two three four five six seven eight let's double check okay perfect i'm gonna put a semicolon then we need to specify the server equal to localhost then we need to specify the port equal five four three two and lastly i need to specify my database and this database is going to be equal again the same database i created my app db 
Great. So now that I have my sample DB connection, I'm just gonna copy this, put it inside my program.cs, inside my default connection here. And now basically I'm using the Postgres connection string. So now that I have data in my connection string, the first thing that I need to do is after services, I need to say add entity framework .npg SQL, And then I need to change this from SQLite to use npg sql so now that i have done this now my application is actually now configured to use postgres rather than sqlite and it's going to take the configuration that i have here so now what i want to do is i want to create my migration so i put dot net ef migrations add i'm going to call it initial migration and i'm going to refer to my startup project and it's going to be formula one api perfect now we can see that has been created successfully if i come here and you can see it's started to add it so i'm going to put add files and we can see i have my migration folder and i have my initial migration there order for me to create my tables okay perfect so now that i have done this now i want to actually implement this so i'm going to put .NET ef database update and specify also the startup project and that's it now i can see basically i've created my database and now all of this now is my application is connected to postgres rather than sqlite and this is how easy it is in order for me to do the switch so now if i run my application so now if i try to create a driver and uh, let's click on write out let's zoom in a bit and i'm gonna put first name lewis last name hamilton driver number 44 I'm just gonna put a random birthday and i'm gonna execute and we got here a 201 we get everything has executed successfully now if i connect to my database and see it there before we do that let's do a get for all drivers you should be able to see that coming directly from the database now let's open up my database and see it so now as you can see here i have my database if i open schema if i open public tables we'll be able to see that i have my drivers table if i click on view data we'll be able to see i have lewis hamilton here the information that i have just added let's create another user so if we go back to my browser create another user here I'm just gonna put my name right now, Muhammad Lawand. I'm just gonna put favorite number 23, execute, and let's go back to the database, refresh. As you can see, I have my new user here as well, the old user. And if I go back to my web browser, I click on get drivers, we should be able to see I have two drivers here. So this is how easy it is to switch from one, SQL, from one database technology to another. If we go back to my source code here, if I stop this and minimize this, close this for now, because basically I'm utilizing my unit of work pattern here, and basically everything is wired up through my API DB contacts, and basically and what I'm doing is I'm actually all of the configuration that I need is I actually injected it through my program.cs whenever the application run. I don't really have to do a lot of changes when I'm switching from database technology to another. Just to want to note that here we're not doing data migration. All I'm doing is I'm just changing my database technology where my application is referring to a new database type rather than the old one. So I'm switching SQLite with Postgres. I'm actually able to do this on the fly by just switching first my libraries updating my program.cs and then creating a new migration and from there I'm actually able to utilize it. Data migration is a completely different story. If you're interested in that, please let me know and I'll make sure to cover this in a bit more detail. So now that we have seen how this works, this was the brief introduction of how we can actually utilize Postgres with our APIs. What do we need to install and how we can actually configure it and if we need also how we can actually add migration files and how we can actually update this database. I hope this video was helpful. If it was, please like, share and subscribe. If you'd like to support me, please consider supporting me on Patreon or my me a coffee with that said thank you very much for watching and have a great day